Thanks so much for joining with us. Public outcry from parents is rising, and they're protesting the president's push to include gender identity under sex discrimination. Well, a record 350,000 people registered comments on the government website, and since then, more than half of those have mysteriously disappeared. Heather Sells has the story. At one point, Americans had posted close to 350,000 public comments on the Title IX rule, which would affect K through 12 and college students. Some in favor and many with comments like these. As a teacher of middle and then high school students, this is a horrific idea. Stop throwing women under the bus. People take the time to comment more when they're concerned. And Candace Jackson would know. She served as acting assistant secretary for civil rights in the education department during the Trump administration. She says while there's no official count on which way the comments leaned, it is telling that so many wanted their voices heard. I think what this what this says is that there's a lot of concern that we're not we're not pushing Title IX forward to be more protective of girls and women having equal educational opportunities, we're, we're rolling that back. At the president's request, Education Secretary Miguel Cardona has proposed a reinterpretation of Title IX. The 1972 law banned sex discrimination in education. Now, by redefining sex to include gender identity, it would allow any student in any locker room or bathroom. That could also lead to the end end of girls and women's sports, plus force the use of certain pronouns. The actual number of Title IX comments is now in question. After the Daily Signal found 160,000 somehow disappeared. Politico later reported the Education Department cited a clerical error. Some, like former Department Counsel Sarah Parshall Perry, say not so fast. It's telling we haven't heard anything from the Department of Education itself on a very significant disparity. By law, the department must review all the comments. While that could take months, we can expect legal challenges in the meantime. I think that there are uh, advocacy organizations that are very concerned about civil liberties, like what this will do to our First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of exercise of, of uh, uh, religion. Uh, due process. So it may be an uphill battle for the Department of Education to actually issue a final rule that will not be tied up in court for quite a while. State attorneys general could also sue, and there's also the possibility Congress could weigh in. For now, Jackson believes school boards should hit the pause button on any new gender policies, and that's mainly because it could be months, even years, before the matter is settled. Gordon. So, Heather, what happens next with the proposed regulation? Well, the department by law has to review all of the comments that came in, and that is expected to take, you know, around a year or maybe a little less, maybe a little more. And then after that, legal challenges, as we were mentioning, could come from a number of advocacy groups, Gordon. And the federal courts already are weighing in on this issue, and they're going different directions, which tells us that this could end up in the Supreme Court. Also, in the meantime, Gordon, you're seeing a lot of activity at the state and local level. Uh, we just saw in Virginia. Uh, Governor Glenn Youngkin rolled back the policies of his predecessor. He's wanting parents to drive transgender policies regarding their children in schools. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of activity across the board, but this is going to take a couple years to settle out. Well, with the mandated uh, use of specific pronouns, well, what does this mean now for free speech? Right. What's really interesting is that there is a big push on the left to extend anti-harassment uh, protections to gender identity, and then that gets into speech issues and using pronouns. We already saw this in Wisconsin, where a school uh, accused three middle school students of using the wrong pronouns to address their classmate. And then even just this morning, Gordon, uh, there is news around Vanderbilt University. Southern Baptist leaders are calling out Vanderbilt for uh, not uh, encouraging or shall I say discouraging employees uh, from conscientiously objecting to trans surgeries uh, and saying that they shouldn't 
bother working at Vanderbilt. So there is a lot of free speech uh, issues and religious liberty issues surrounding all this that is definitely coming to play. Any possible chance that Congress could act here and say, no, you, you can't extend these regulations uh, and try to rein this back in and any hope from Congress on this? Right. Well, Sarah Partial Perry mentioned that to me. Uh, that's definitely a possibility. But of course, it depends on who controls Congress. And we've got the midterms coming up. So we'll see what happens. All right. Well, Heather, thanks for that report. And let me underline on this one just how far reaching the regulatory authority is of a federal bureaucracy and that how this kind of sea change, this is, we're talking about a cultural change in every single public school in America. Uh, and, and you start enforcing this. Any school that gets federal funding, it, it also applies to them. Uh, have we gone too far in a bureaucratic state where we allow a bureaucracy to dictate what we do in our schools? In my opinion, schooling needs to have heavy influence from the parents of the children attending. In other news, Vladimir Putin is escalating his war in Ukraine. He's calling up more troops and threatening that he might use nuclear weapons. Efren Graham has the latest from the CBN newsroom. Efren? Gordon Putin is calling up 300,000 reservists to support Russia's war in Ukraine. This comes as his troops are suffering serious setbacks. In a speech to the Russian people, he claimed his troops are facing the best of Western forces and weapons in the war. He also said Russia will, quote, use all the instruments at its disposal to protect territorial integrity. Putin is spreading to, is preparing to declare areas of eastern and southern Ukraine part of Russia. His officials in those territories are scrambling to hold referendums on the issue this week. The White House is calling that a sham. These are not the actions of a confident country. These are not acts of strength. Quite the opposite. President Biden is expected to send a tough message to Putin in his speech to the United Nations General Assembly today, but he will not call for Russia's removal from the U.N. Security Council. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is facing legal pressure for flying Venezuelan asylum seekers from Texas to Massachusetts. An advocacy group filed a class action lawsuit against DeSantis and Florida's Secretary of State on their behalf. The suit claims the migrants were manipulated into boarding the planes and deprived of their due process. A Florida official said the relocations were voluntary and the migrants signed consent forms. Meanwhile, a Texas sheriff in Bexar County has opened a criminal investigation, believing federal laws were broken. All of this as the border crisis reaches new highs. More than two million people have been apprehended this year. Turning now to the COVID crisis and President Biden's surprising statement on 60 Minutes declaring the pandemic is over. As CBN medical reporter Lori Johnson explains, health experts have conflicting views about what the president meant and where we now stand. By declaring the pandemic over, President Biden caught a number of people off guard and wondering how Americans will respond to that statement. The president made the comment during his first one-on-one -on -one interview in months. We're still doing a lot of work on it, uh, It's but the pandemic is over. If you notice, no one's wearing masks. Everybody seems to be in pretty good shape. And so I think it's changing, and I think this is a perfect example of it. Putting the pandemic in the rearview mirror raises questions about continued vaccine mandates for the military and government workers. It could also make it difficult to pass the more than $22 billion COVID relief bill for vaccines, tests, and PPEs. We will continue to make sure that we have the supply that the, the population needs. And with the help of Congress, we'll be able to do that way into next year. And with U.S. deaths topping 400 daily, doctors warn against developing a false sense of security. Not to quote Rambo, but it's not over. It's not over. And the bottom line is this, uh, that uh, it's close. We're better than we were. In fact, the World Health Organization uh, leadership has said, look, we're, we're in a, a very good place. We're getting there. But I, I wouldn't exactly say it's over. Experts say if it hasn't already happened, COVID will be downgraded to an endemic like the flu, which kills about 30,000 Americans a year. There will always be some people that uh, succumb to 
uh, anything, uh, whether it be the flu or uh, another kind of viral illness, but COVID-19 will be relegated more to that level and not a pandemic where no one has immunity. Doctors see COVID boosters becoming an annual recommendation like the flu shot. People who follow Christ, it's important that we do that, uh, one, without fear. Uh, in other words, we know who holds tomorrow. And even if that tomorrow is, is terrible and ugly, our, our trust is in him. And the second, though, is that I, I think we should also do that with other, others' consideration. Uh, and I think we have learned that, I hope, during COVID, that, that you know, my germs don't just affect me, for example. And I think we should be considerate and err on the side of caution and, and love. So while health experts may debate whether COVID is a pandemic or an endemic, one thing is certain, it's here to stay. Lori Johnson, CBN News. It is clearly here to stay. Gordon? And it is here to stay. It's here to stay in all of its various mutations. And that's sort of the untold story in all of this, to uh, announce the pandemic is over. Uh, well, you're not paying attention to that. You know, the, this virus still has amazing ability to mutate. So just like we get different versions of the flu and uh, the uh, CDC tries to predict what that is and everyone should you know, get a flu shot, particularly if you're over 50 and all of these kinds of things. We're gonna see that with COVID. Uh, but my worry, and it is a, an act of worry, could this mutate yet again into a more deadly version? Uh, that is what coronaviruses do. They are remarkably adept and remarkably able to mutate. Extremist groups are targeting teenagers for recruitment with a popular form of entertainment. They're using video games to lure troubled teens. Well, CBN's Brody Carter talked with a former radical gamer who brings us this warning for parents. It's highly likely you or a family member have played video games. They've become so popular that an estimated 216 million Americans consider themselves gamers. That's more than half the country's population. And today's video games are a far cry from Pong and Pac-Man, for better and for worse. I'm currently actually looking at the darker sides of games and how games are being leveraged for radicalization and the mobilization of radical networks. We could post somebody to make a Nazi game on Roblox let alone one of such expanse. Alex Newhouse and Dr. Rachel Coert are behind a groundbreaking study on the evolution of gaming and the platform's growing use to promote extreme ideologies and radicalization. I personally focus mostly on the far right, and it appears that the far right is the most interested in using game platforms, but jihadists, Islamists, like they also engage with, with, um, with gaming platforms. They try to recruit teens and adolescents. It's a very small group of people but it's a very powerful group of people. For those who believe they or their kids are safe from extreme propaganda, the Anti-Defamation League has found close to one in four people are exposed to white supremacist ideologies on the internet. That's about 54 million Americans. It was so shocking to me that the number was, it was 23%. I was like, it can't be 23%. Like that is so high, how is that possible? So shocking, it became the catalyst for Cohort and Newhouse to dive into the research in order to raise awareness. One aspect behind this trend is the combining of video games with streaming platforms or social networking apps. Discord and Twitch, which aren't games, those are called, you know, we refer to those as gaming adjacent platforms. And then things like Minecraft and Roblox, which have some sort of interactivity, those are games. Given this overlap, players can stream live gaming sessions or connect with complete strangers through chats and forums, which can be great, but also dangerous. Games were created as games first and social platforms second, but the problem is that the growth of games as kind of social networking spaces has exponentially outpaced the rate at which the gaming industry has kept up with their moderation. Discord, a social media platform for gamers, was specifically identified in 2020 as a hub and community for right-wing extremism. In Europe, the country's counterterrorism coordinator doubling down on that warning, saying extremists are increasingly present in digital gaming spaces. They shouldn't be leaving the game with strangers, just like you wouldn't leave the park with a stranger. If somebody's saying, hey, why don't you leave this gaming space and come join me and these other people you don't know on a third party server, that's usually a red flag, especially for younger children. 
Even so, Rachel points out the research finds there are game spaces that provide more good than bad. She adds there is a darkness, however, which is why she and her colleague are working to make games a safer place. I was a former extremist. I de-radicalized uh, almost 20 years ago. Um, I was part of a uh, organization called the Rolling Wood Skins, which was a offshoot of one of the largest national socialist or Nazi movements in the United States. Ryan Lowry shared with CBN about his former life as a prominent neo-Nazi with the goal of taking online hate groups mainstream. It's in every um, platform you go to. These recruiters, whether it's through jihadism or domestic terrorism, whatever it might be, they, they've adapted to and know where they need to be and how to find the most vulnerable people. In finding ways to finance his mission and move in the ranks, Lowry got into trouble with the law. While his life of crime ultimately led to prison, the time behind bars provided distance from his extremist group. Friends and family helped Lowry de-radicalize and ultimately rededicate his life to Jesus Christ. I was born and raised a Christian um, my whole life. I, I think that sometimes what happens is, is we, can, we can get tunnel visioned at times being Christians and not opening ourselves up to what other cultures are there and what other cultures do offer. I, I want it to be a shock to people. I want them to understand that um, you can be anybody. Nobody is untouchable from what these groups offer. For 10 years, Lowry has helped extremists find a new way to live through a counterterrorism effort called Parallel Networks. He says the only way to open those doors is through conversations and compassion. You know, I looked at Jesus Christ and the way that he um, didn't go into churches to preach to the choir. He went out into areas where people were struggling, people that, you know, uh, adulterous, like Mary Magdalene and others. I'm a firm believer that humanity, um, we're supposed to treat each other with peace and kindness and love. And, and, and this lack of empathy that we have in our communities um, is what's ultimately, I believe, tearing us apart. Unfortunately, technology combined with bad actors has torn the social fabric by trying to replace community with an online world. That's why Dr. Cowart wants to remind gamers and others that when things appear bad online or in life, they have the power to make a change. When things seem a little bit off, the other great thing about games and the internet is you can just switch to a different server or switch to a different game or mute that person or block that person. Um, you don't have to engage in conversations that make you feel uncomfortable. Brody Carter, CBN News. Well, I hope this is a warning to parents and to grandparents. Uh, please pay attention to what your children are doing online. And if they're gaming, don't think, well, okay, it's just the game algorithm that they're interacting with. Uh, these live chats, and particularly the headset chats, uh, you need to pay attention to what's happening on that uh, and what kind of messages they're, they're, they're hearing. Um, the language can be absolutely incredible. Uh, but then you throw into it someone trying to advance a particular ideology, and it gets, frankly, very scary. Uh, I'm a student of history. It's amazing to me how history seems to be repeating right now. Uh, it's 100 years since the 1920s, but in the 1920s, you had the rise of a very radical left. Uh, it's called the Soviet Union. And Lenin, uh, let's have a violent overthrow of a culture in order to tear down all the systems and rebuild it as this socialist paradise, as a communist paradise. And then in opposition to that, you had the rise of national socialism in Germany. It took advantage of economic turmoil, political turmoil, uh, a sense of defeat after World War I, and it was a political movement. I encourage everyone, take a look at the Nuremberg rallies of the late 20s, early 30s, and this is all before Hitler took power. We have to remind ourselves he was elected, and the phrases they used, the slogans they used, it was an adaptation, a warping of Christianity to reinforce this sort of idea of a master race that was destined to rule for a third millennium. Absolutely crazy, but it got somebody elected. Uh, we need to be on guard for these ideas, and all of these things have to be examined by Christians. Is this really Christian? Or are they just mimicking it in order to advance another agenda? Let us be forewarned and let us know our history so that we don't repeat it. Down and out, Benny and Sarah had no food in the fridge and Christmas was coming. When Benny had to quit his job for health reasons, their income took a deep dive. 
Instead of holding on to what little money they had, the couple chose to give. And that choice made the way for a miracle. Benny and Sarah Kirtley love to talk about the good old days. They say God always saw them through, especially when it came to tough financial seasons, like years ago when Benny was in his 50s and found out he had heart problems. I was in a very stressful job, and I knew that if I didn't quit, I'd die. He had to get a pacemaker and go on disability, which drastically affected the couple's income. Around that time, the two became Christians, and Benny heard God speak to him about giving right away. He said, hey, you start giving, and I'll, I'll start giving. We talked about it, but I'll be honest, I didn't know where it was going to come from. Still, in the midst of the financial uncertainty, the couple chose to trust God with their money, and they tithed for the first time. And when we started tithing, things began to change, really for the better. Sarah went from part-time to full-time work, making more than she ever had. Even when that job ended, Christmas coming up and no food in the fridge, the Curleys believed God would somehow intervene because they'd been consistently tithing. We got on our knees and he heard us. I know he did. Things came out of the blue. And there was a woman in the church that heard that we didn't have any money. So she hands a check to our pastor and it was for $250. It came from God, and he was saying, I, I've got you back. You're going to have food on the table for Christmas. They immediately gave 10% of that $250 to their church, and God kept providing in the midst of Benny's health challenges. He got a paper route and helped a neighbor remodel his home, while Sarah landed some interior decorating jobs. Then they fulfilled a long-standing dream and opened a very successful restaurant, always tithing from their income. Even when they finally retired, they decided to tithe on their Social Security and any additional income they received. We found out we could not afford not to tithe. It's easy. He promises in Scripture that He will give us more. On top of tithing, the Kirtleys started giving to CBN. We got to where we were really interested in what Seven Hundred Club was doing, and it touched our hearts. Medical, surgical, building homes setting up businesses for these people, communities. These are people that need help and children. They're becoming orphans. And then he said, do you want to start tithing to the 700 Club? And I said, can we do it? He said, can we not? So we did. The couple has increased their pledge to CBN several times and has given generous one-time gifts as well. We're dedicated to to helping other people through the 700 Club because I think it's one of the few things he asks us to do after we accept him is to further his kingdom. That's important, it really is. Giving to the 700 Club is giving to the world. 700 Club are my feet. They're walking it there. All I'm doing is helping write the check. Now in their golden years, they challenge others to tithe to give to CBN and watch what God will do. He's just asking for us to do our part. Pray about it and let God lead you and guide you. That money is not ours, it's His. You can't outgive God, you cannot. Here's the promise from Deuteronomy chapter 28. All these blessings, just realize, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. When you live a life of obedience and say, I want to put God first. I want to put him first in everything. I want to seek him first. I want to seek his righteousness. Then all of these things will be added unto you. If you want to start a, life, a lifetime of doing this, this isn't some on again, off again kind of thing, a lifetime of giving. If you want to start doing that and say, yes, I want to be, be obedient. I want the blessings of the Lord to overtake me. I want to live life His way. Well, then give us a call and say, yes, I want to join the 700 Club. If you want to see the good news go around the world, join the 700 Club. A portion of every gift goes into the work of CBN International to train Christians around the world how to do Christian television, how to show stories of what Jesus is doing in their culture. Not some faraway place or faraway time, but right in the here and now. We want to tell the stories of what God is doing in the world today.
today, and we need your help to do that. We have so many open doors for us. We want to take advantage of all of them so more people can hear this wonderful good news. If you want to help people around the world and here, right here at home, join the 700 Club. Another portion goes into the work of Operation Blessing to help people. Now, it's, it's wonderful what happens when tens of thousands of people join together and say, yes, let's make a difference in the world. Let's be part of a wonderful change that the gospel could go forward. People could be helped. People in their time of need would know that God loves them and there are people that care about them and want to help them. If that's you, join with us. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, yes, I want to be a part of the 700 Club. How much is that? Well, it's just $20 a month. That's 65 cents a day. When you join at the 700 Club level, we'll send you a wonderful new teaching on, on Psalm 23. You'll get a free copy. If you join at 700 Club Gold, that's $40 a month. You'll get three copies, so you have extras to share with your family and your friends. If you join at 1,000 Club, that's $1,000 a year, and that breaks out to $84 a month. Uh, you'll get five copies of it. Now, when you listen to this new teaching on the 23rd Psalm, you'll learn the Hebrew meaning behind the words, and you'll discover the promises, protection, and provision available to you. I want to do a meditation on the Psalm of David, Psalm 23. Gordon Robertson presents The Lord is My Shepherd, a Psalm of David. Each verse is a guide for us in our life. And it's a beautiful illustration for me of how Jesus leads us. What happens when we fully embrace the Lord is my shepherd? Get the Lord is my shepherd, the latest audio teaching from Gordon Robertson. Call now or go to CBN.com. Well, imagine raising six grandchildren all on your own and then losing your job because of the pandemic. That's what a grandmother in Thailand was facing. And before long, she was down to her last 60 cents. Grandma Nipa has been raising her grandkids ever since their parents abandoned them. It's not easy to provide for my grandchildren. Even though we don't have much, taking them to an orphanage has never crossed my mind. I often tell them, I love you with all my heart. I will never leave you. Seven-year-old Pai is the youngest of the six grandchildren. I love my grandma very much. I study hard and help out in the kitchen. That makes grandma happy. Grandma Nipa earned money to provide for her grandkids by folding gloves. She made about $8 working 18 hours a day. Then she lost her job and they got down to their last 60 cents. What could I do with 60 cents? All I could afford was three packs of instant noodles. After my grandkids shared them, I cried in secret. I couldn't bear to see them starving. Then CBN's Orphan's Promise brought food to the family. We also provided equipment and supplies for Grandma Nipa to set up a food stand in front of her home. Earlier, we'd invited Pi and the other grandkids to an Orphan's Promise after-school program. There, they received help with homework, hot meals, and watched CBN's Superbook. After one episode, Pi and the other children prayed to become Christians. I believe in Jesus because he helped our family. He saved us and takes good care of us. The whole family began to go to church and soon Grandma Nipa became a Christian too. Today, her food business is doing well. Her income has doubled and the children no longer go hungry. Every day, I thank God for the people who support CBN. God provided for us through you. You did so many good things for Grandma and our family. Thank you very much for helping us. Well, those smiles put a smile on my face. And, you know, those thank yous and those prayers go to our CBN partners. You know, we are changing the lives of families all around the world because of your generosity, because of your yes, your yes to spread the message of the gospel around the world, your yes to help people in very tangible, practical ways, all while spreading the message of the gospel. And if you're not a CBN partner, I, be, I encourage you to become one today. If you want to help families and children like you just saw, I mean, 
mean, I can't imagine the pressure uh, that that grandmother faces raising six grandchildren. Their parents abandoned them, and she has taken the role of mother and father and provider for six children. And there are people like that all around the world. And when you become a member of the 700 Club, you're not just giving people a handout. You're giving them a hand up like you just saw. We're helping people. Uh, we're teaching them how to run businesses so they that they can provide for their family long term. So again, if you want to help men, women, and children in practical ways, all while spreading the message of the gospel, uh, be generous. You know, God blesses us to be a blessing unto other others. And the Bible says, when you give, it will be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over in your lap. So if you want that, I encourage you to become a 700 Club member today. All you have to do is either give us a call, the number's on your screen, one 800 700 7000 or you can go to cbn.com or you can always do my favorite as i always like to say text to give all you have to do is text to cbn to 71777 you will get a link in that text message back to you and then you click that link and it sends you over to this giving page where you can choose which level you would like to become a 700 club member at you can join at 700 club gold which is $20 a month uh, i'm sorry that's 700 club and then you can go up from there 700 club gold which is $40 a month some of you can go up from there uh, and even more than that. And my word of encouragement is always just to be obedient to what God is speaking to you right now. And again, I just believe um, as children of God, we are called to be generous. So if you want to be generous, if you want to change the lives of people all around the world, become a member of the 700 Club today. And when you do, we actually want to give you something in return. This is our way of saying thank you. It is uh, Gordon Robertson's latest teaching. It's called The Lord is My Shepherd, a Psalm of David. And he goes through the entire uh, 23rd Psalm. It's one of the most popular popular Psalms where it starts off, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'm sure a lot of you guys know that. But there's just really some amazing hidden treasures as he just breaks down the Hebrew meaning. And I'm telling you, it will encourage you. So again, if you want to change lives and spread the message of the gospel and then receive this as a thank you, become a member of the 700 Club today. All you have to do is give us a call, 1-800-700-7000, or go to cbn.com, or text to give, text CBN to 71777. Gordon. Well, when you join the 700 Club, you help people all over the world and right here at home in the USA. With inflation and the rising cost of food, Jennifer and Matt were already struggling to make ends meet. Then Jennifer had emergency surgery and couldn't work. The couple needed to hand up to make it through the tough times. And that's exactly what they got, thanks to you. When Matt and Jennifer first married, they lived paycheck to paycheck. Then Jennifer had an ectopic pregnancy that required emergency surgery and a month of recovery after losing the baby. She couldn't work, so Matt became Jennifer's caregiver and the couple's sole provider. It was hard on both of them. I had always been sort of independent, I felt like, like I, you know, I could take care of myself. I was a guy who was supposed to provide for my family, and knowing that I was doing everything I could physically, it just wasn't enough. They needed food and basic household supplies, so they turned to Lighthouse Gospel Mission, a partner of Operation Blessing. The word for it is just awesome. It was amazing to know that other people are there for you through Operation Blessing and through the pallets and the boatloads of food. Everything that we needed was there. We were really fortunate in that season. We really needed all of those things, and it was really the first opportunity that I got to experience that kind of love. Through the help of Operation Blessing in their church community, Matt and Jennifer were able to get back on their feet. Next thing you know, Jennifer calls me up. She's crying. I'm like, what? I'm pregnant? But then, you know, I have to hang up. I cried like, like, like a baby. I was like, oh my God, God, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So then when we had Aubrey, it was really just an amazing experience. God really used a lot of people at church and our pastors just kind of opened up the door to the warehouse and said, you know, whatever you guys need, go ahead and get it. Thanks to the support of Operation Blessing Partners, many families like Matt and Jennifer's are now thriving. What you did helped my wife, myself, my family, it helped each and every one of us not only know that it's not just the food, but that God was there with us. Thank you for allowing 
yourself to be the hands and feet of God. Isn't that wonderful? People thanking you, thanking you for being the hands and feet of God to be there in their time of need. If you want to join in everything we're doing around the world, if you want to join in everything we're doing right here in America, if you want to see the gospel go forward, join the 700 Club. Say, yes, I want to be a part of it. If you're already a member, I encourage you to increase and consider 700 Club Gold at $40 a month. We also have a 1,000 Club, $1,000 a year. That's $84 a month. For those with the means, how about 2,500 Club? Uh, at 2,500 a year. Founder is $5,000 or more a year. And then we have something special called Chairman Circle, 10,000 or more a year. At whatever level God is speaking to you to give, do it right now, 1-800-700-7000. Now, when you call, ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving with the bank doing all the work. And we can send as our gift to you, Power for Life monthly teaching CDs. A lot of different ways you can sign up for Pledge Express. You can call and ask for it. You can go to CBN.com and you give monthly on the internet. You'll automatically sign up to it. We have a new thing called Text to Give where you can text the letters CBN to 71777. Uh, you make Ashley really happy because it's her favorite way of giving. When you do that, a uh, link will come up on your smartphone. You click on that link and it'll take you to a monthly giving page. Again, you'll automatically sign up for Pledge Express. Do it now. Call us 1 800 700 7000. And when you join, Join at any level, whether it's 700 Club or 700 Club Gold, 1000 Club, we'll send you this wonderful teaching, The Lord is My Shepherd. It's a teaching that takes you on a journey through the 23rd Psalm. You'll see how the Good Shepherd meets every one of our needs, and you'll discover what it means to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And welcome back to the 700 Club for this CBN News Break. Gas prices are on the rise again after dropping every day for more than three months. The national average for a gallon of regular gasoline now stands at $3.68 today. That is more than a half cent rise from yesterday. Prices dropped 98 days in a row, falling from a high of $5.02 back in June. The Federal Reserve is set to raise interest rates again today in its ongoing effort to fight inflation. Most predict the central bank will hike the rate by three quarters of a percent, though some believe that stubborn inflation rates will spur the Fed to raise it a full point. The August Consumer Price Index showed the underlying levels of inflation grew worse last month. I want to remind you, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Vacuuming the house, mowing the lawn, and keeping up with her great-grandchild, Barbara Seleski is 90 years young and still going strong. I was busy all the time. Always have been uh, on my feet a lot. Now I sit more than I used to, but um, I have never been one who to sit. Barbara Selensky has never been one to take a lot of downtime. Even now, at 90 years old and living alone, she finds there's always something to be done. Anything that needs to be done as a homemaker, that's what I do. At this age, you're concerned. You want to be independent and, uh, as much as you can. I like to do my own things. I do want to be as self-sufficient as I can with the Lord's help. In 2020, she would need the Lord's help even more. It started one morning in March after doing some work around the house when she bent down to look out the window. My left knee, it like went out of joint, just really painful, really painful. And it took a while for it to go back in joint. After a few weeks, Barbara's knee continued painfully popping out of place and it was slowing her down. When I walked, um, I could walk fine, but it's when I would uh, go, let's say a step uh, turned or pivoted, it would uh, put it out. I was careful because when it went out, it was really painful. Yeah, it wasn't easy, it was hard. It was happening all the time. Finally, a month later at her wellness checkup in April, Barbara told her doctor, who recommended she try a knee brace. I went and I got this um, knee 
elastic a sleeve. With that sleeve on, I did everything else that I ordinarily would do. Kept on mowing the lawn or doing whatever I needed in the house. And I wore it from the time I got up in the morning to the time I went to bed. While the brace supported Barbara's knee and her busy lifestyle, Barbara still believed God for healing. And I prayed all the time that the Lord would heal. You know, I was, I was praying that uh, he would heal my knee. And then one November morning while doing laundry, she was listening to the 700 Club and heard Gordon Robertson and Ashley Key praying. And there's someone you heard the story about the knee. You're laying your hand on your left knee and there's deep pain within the socket. God has heard your cry. He's restored everything concerning that knee, all of the cartilage, the bone being knit together properly, the joint being established, everything that's needed, the ligaments, everything is being restored to you right now. In Jesus' name, be released from pain and be whole. It happened so fast, I can't explain it, but I knew that it was mine. I received that, and I bent down and took off the brace, and I have not worn it since. Yeah, that was, that was a wonderful day. Today, Barbara is still going strong, staying busy, taking care of her home, and enjoying time with her family without knee pain. What I found was I need to receive what he's already paid for and given me. I thank the Lord every day in my devotions for the things he's done for me and for healing my knee. Praise God. God is a healer. He is. And if you are watching this and you have some doubt in your mind right now, just have faith. The Bible says faith as small as a mustard seed, a mustard seed you can barely see in your own hand. That amount of faith can move mountains. So have faith in the name of Jesus. That's all you have to have faith in. And that's a lot. Jesus is our healer. He is our savior. He is the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He is Lord over your body. He is Lord over the universe. He sits on the throne and he intercedes for you and for me. And it's one thing to believe and know that God can heal. But it's another thing when you just believe fully that he will heal you. So Gordon and I are going to pray for your, you and your needs today. And have faith. Come at prayer with that heart posture of, God, I know you will. I know you can, but I know you will heal me, heal my loved ones. So let's just go into prayer with that attitude. But before we do, we definitely just want to continue to read and encourage you guys with some amazing answer to prayers. This is Jamie from Decatur, Alabama. She was involved in a car wreck and went through the SUV windshield. He broke his uh, neck in three different places, dislocated his shoulder and was in a coma. He had tremendous neck, back and shoulder pain since then. And was even addicted to painkillers. And one day, Jamie heard Gordon say someone was being healed from neck pain. And Ashley also said that someone was being healed in their left shoulder. Jamie received it, believed it, and now he is healed. Praise God. Double miracle. Yeah. Here's Cheryl from Philadelphia. She was watching this show. Ashley had a word of knowledge about someone who's being healed of an issue with their hand, some kind type of stiffening in their hand not allowing uh, it to function as needed. Well, Cheryl then prayed, God, in Jesus' name. Yeah, in Je and that's a wonderful prayer. Can you please touch my middle finger on my right hand and enable me to totally bend my finger because the pain is excruciating? Well, when we finish praying, Ashley realized, Cheryl realized she was healed. She can now bend the finger, open bottles and jars. She can use a can opener with no pain. God wants you without pain. He wants to take away all your pain. There's a wonderful verse from Revelation. It's in the 21st chapter. There shall be no more pain. For those of you who just watched the story of Barbara and you've got chronic knee pain and, and you're looking at, well, what are the alternatives? What can I do? Do I have to wear this brace? Do I just have to live with it the rest of my life? All of these things, look to heaven. 
in heaven there's no pain. Barbara heard a word of knowledge on this show, and she said, it was wonderful what she said, it happened so fast. Here she is in her 90s, it happened so fast. Let it happen so fast for you. Let's pray in that wonderful name, the name of Jesus. His very name means salvation. It means wholeness. It means healing. It means deliverance. It means that the will of the Father will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We know from Revelation, in heaven there's no more pain. Let's ask if that will be done in your body right now. Let's pray. Lord, we see your will. We see what you've done in heaven, how there is no more pain, no more sorrow. And Lord, we ask that it would be manifest now that your kingdom would come, your will would be done in our bodies. So we speak to our fingers, we speak to our knees, we speak to our ankles, our shoulders, our backs, we say to it out loud, we speak to our necks, be healed and be made whole. May there be no more pain, no more discomfort, no more chronic injury. You don't want me to live with this. I don't want to live with this. Take it away now. In the name of Jesus, I receive everything you have for me. I want your will to be done in my life right now. Ashley, God's given you some. Yeah, I believe God is correcting spines today. And I, I really just saw like lower, lower back pain and um, discs that have been uh, moved and altered and um, chronic spine issues that you've had since you were born. And the doctors just say, well, you were born this way. I'm sorry, you're going to have to live this way. No, you do not have to live this way any longer. He is correcting your spine in the name of Jesus. I just believe it's multiple people who have suffered from chronic back pain for years. God is touching you right now. Just receive it. You will not have pain any longer. You'll be able to move like you haven't been able to move in years. Just receive this healing from your God. He loves you. He sees you. He is your healer in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Someone with a, a condition with the toes and both feet, but it's really painful in the right foot. It's uh, like the toes are curled, hammer toe, and, and God is uncurling that. He's straightening out your toes, relieving you of all that pain right now. In Jesus' name, knees be healed, cartilage be restored. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. If you've been healed, let us know. Let us share in your good report. Give us a call. 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Romans. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow.